Hey everyone, today we're having a look at a two-step probability question. Uh, it's all about 10 students who are going to their aviation awards night and there's two uh, awards on offer. There's a distinction award and a merit award as well. And we're gonna see how many ways they can be awarded if a student can um, receive both awards or if they can only receive um, just one of them. So we'll start with part A, part um, one. So that's asking how many ways can this award be given or the two awards be given if the same student can receive both awards. So what it's saying there is in this scenario, you could have say student three, for example, they could receive both the merit and the distinction award. You could have student five receive both, you could have student seven receive both. What it means is that you've got that full 10 by 10 sample space to um, pick from for this one. And 10 lots of 10 is 100. So there's gonna be 100 different ways that these awards could be um, given. Uh, for question A, part B, this is where you're not allowed to receive two awards. So say in the table below, I've got student one can't receive the distinction and the merit, so that one is gone. Student two can't receive both, three can't receive both, and so on. On. What that essentially is do does is remove um, 10 elements from the um, sample space, which is going to leave us with 90 ways of um, awarding those diligent, hardworking aviation students. So as an example, if student three was to be awarded the distinction award, um, student one could win merit, two could win merit, uh, four could win merit, and five could win merit, and so on. Okay, that brings us on to question uh, B. So this is saying if a student cannot receive both awards, what's the probability that they receive? And it starts off with the um, distinction award. So I'm gonna say probability that they receive a um, distinction. I'm gonna assume that it's a randomly selected student. You'd hope it's some sort of merit base, but let's say they're choosing it um, at random. I'm gonna pick uh, student five. So let's say if student five is the winner of the distinction award, we could also have, as well as that, we could have student one win the merit, two could win merit and so on. So there's nine possible ways in which that student can win the, um, the distinction award and then who gets the merit award doesn't really matter. But it means that out of our 90 um, elements in our sample space, nine of them are favorable for this outcome. There's nine out of 90, which will simplify to one over um, 10. Um, very similar situation for the probability of winning a merit award. So I could do the same thing by counting down. We've got nine favorable outcomes out of the 90 that are available in total, which again would simplify to one over 10 for this one. The other thing that we can do, so for part three, we're gonna use the information that we worked in parts uh, one and two to help us out here, because this part of the question wants us to find the probability that neither of those outcomes happen. So essentially in this sample space, there's three possible outcomes for a particular student. You could either win the merit award, you could win the distinction award, or you could win Nothing. So what we'll do for this one, we'll take the number one, which in probability can either mean a 100% chance of something, but it's also the sum of all probabilities in the sample space. So if we find the complement of winning something, we'll find the probability of winning neither of those things. So if I take one, subtract one over 10, which is our probability of winning the distinction, subtract one over 10 again, which is the probability of winning a merit award, Award, and that's gonna leave me with um, eight over 10 or four over five as my probability of winning neither of those things. So the odds are if they're selecting these at random and you're an aviation student going to the aviation party, you're probably going to be leaving empty handed sadly. For part C, we're going back to the uh, the first table. So in this situation, it's possible to win um, both awards. So. The uh, part B that we did, it was gonna be one or the other, but not both, or, or neither of them. Um, but this one, it's possible to win um, both of them. So we're looking for the probability that a student 
uh, wins at least one of the awards. Okay, I'm just gonna say that student five is our um, lucky student. So there's 10 ways that they can win the distinction award. So number student one could win merit, student two could win merit and so on, including an option where student five wins the merit as well. But in any case, there's 10 ways in which student five can, can win that distinction award. What we also have to take into account is these um, events here where student five can also win the merit award. Now bear in mind as well, we don't count this one in the middle twice because it's one element in our sample space. It's just one element where that student happens to have won um, both of those awards. So what we do there is we say, well, there's 19 possible ways out of the 100 available where that student could win um, at least one of them. So we've got, uh, 10 scenarios where they can uh, win the distinction. We've got another 10 scenarios where they can um, be the, the merit winner, but we don't count the one in the middle twice. That's 19 in total. Thanks.